Greetings, you sassy bastards. Look at us up here at about, I don't know, 13,000 feet in the uh, Andes Mountains. Got quite close to the border of uh, Bolivia. We have a species of uh, Cumulopuncha boliviana. Quite long spines. Just forming a mat. You can see it right there. Just forming a mat on this sketchy hillside that I probably shouldn't be on. Right next to the road. Up there you got uh, some specimens of uh, Azarella compacta, Apiaceae. Just uh, forming a little carpet. Very thin air, very intense uh, ultraviolet light, and uh, uh, quite cold as well. Uh, you know, I just checked the uh, little barometer, and it's uh, we're not at 13,000 feet, we're about 14,500 feet. This grass, this bunch grass everywhere, it has the consistency of uh, almost of cactus spines. A very long cactus spines. They're very stiff, very sharp. It's something you don't want to fall on. Something you might want to throw somebody on. You know? If you have anybody in mind, maybe you do. But it's not something that you yourself want to fall on. Substrate here is, of course, volcanics. Let's take a look at this uh, Azarella over here. Oh, yeah, there you go. That's pretty nice. So this is a member of the carrot family, APACA. And you can see, you get up close, it's just a, a cluster of litty, little, uh, almost looks like leaf rosettes. Little tiny leaf rosettes. And it, these appear to be the dried flowers, dried flowers and fruits. Dried carpels. Little bits of resin coming off there. And this is a this is a young bastard. This isn't a big. I've seen a, you know, you've seen where they get enormous. We'll check some of those out later. Get the nice patterning. Do you like fractals? Does it make you feel good? Huh? Does it make you feel like you're smart if you're looking at stuff like that? Huh? Like some uh, you know, somebody got like an MC Escher uh drawing for their mouse pad, you know, just like going back to the 90s. What am I talking about? Anyway, here's the area you can see where part of it died off. Turned black. It forms quite a mat. It does go, it's like a, it's like a two or three inch deep mat that just drapes over these rather sharp volcanic rocks, but uh, of course forms this very uh, pleasant to look at, uh, you know, kind of like a comforting uh, rounded figure, a rounded form. Does that comfort you? Is it like a Snuggie? Huh? Do you remember Snuggies? Did I just give you some PTSD from about 10 years ago, bringing them up? Do you remember those days when all Americans thought they could just you know, spend the rest of their lives just eating and watching TV. I think a lot of people still do that, except now they're just streaming Netflix. All right, moving right along. Cumula punches. So this isn't the same subfamily that is the family that produces glockids, those little fiberglass hairs, as uh, opunches, the prickly pears. And I have, got to say, I haven't seen many opunches down here. There's probably a couple where some people, you know, some people like to get uh, eloquent and bourgeois and pronounce them opuntia, which I don't think I uh, would ever catch myself doing. Look at that nice orange coloration on those spines, though. All right, so in a span of about 100 kilometers, we went from uh, the uh, barren, uh, driest, non-polar desert on Earth to uh, 14,500 feet altitude. And you got some ice, just a, a slow trickle, a seep that seems to have frozen and made some cute little... Uh, Icicles over there. You like that? Isn't that nice, huh? Christmas kind of makes me want to throw up. Anyway, uh, that all aside, uh, let's focus on what's going on here ecologically. Of course, it, it's going to benefit a plant to be close to the ground and matted where it's about 1 to uh, 1.5 degrees uh, Celsius warmer than the surrounding ambient temperature when you're this high up. So everything, multiple different families, multiple different plant families, multiple different orders are doing the same thing here, and that's forming a mat, a little carpet. You know, everything from Azarella and Apiaceae to some of these uh, dainty little 
fucking uh, matted asters right here. Sunflowers. These guys are kind of nice. Isn't that cute? Do you like cute shit? Does it make you feel less homicidal? It does me a little bit. You know, there's still quite a few people I'd probably like to throw into some of this spiny grass. But uh, anyway, over here you got a Peristrephia. I believe it's a Peristrephia. It's an Asteraceae for sure. Look at those uh, phyleries just bent back. Those uh, Sudantiums, those Capitulas. Oh, yeah, you got some seed up there, too. You got some Akeens with their little Pappus, the dandelion fuzz. Get some all wind dispersed. There again is that... Uh, that matted bastard. You got another matted bastard over here. This one uh, absolutely is Senecio. Little matted Senecio. I believe this is uh, Algins. Senecio Algins. Got uh, some uh, matted members of the Karyophyllaceae. Yeah, a whole host of uh, Carex and bunch grasses. I think that guy up there is the, uh, I think it's Pycnophyllum. One of the karyophyllaceous, uh, karyophyllaceous bastards. And of course, uh, up there you got the famed uh, Azarella, the uh, Ureta over there. Forming the nice green mat. Some of those guys can live upwards of 3,000 years. Okay, so this is nice. Right here you have a, what appears to be a layer of peat. Just formed from uh, basically a dead, uh, one of these matted plants. Possibly an Azarella. Possibly a... Uh, that the member of the APA say you could just, I mean, it's its thick as hell though. Look at it, it's like a foot deep. It's a thick layer of a, of a carbon, highly carbonaceous material that could uh, otherwise, uh, I mean, I guess it's peat. It's pretty dense. It feels like peat. It, it shakes when you step on it. Oh, look, there's some nice uh, uh, shit of some uh, mammal could be. Over here, this might be a Senecio again. Might be totally wrong on that. It's an Asteraceae for sure. It's got pendant flowers with the prominent styles. Actually, you know what? It doesn't look like a Senecio. I don't know why I thought that. I think because I was looking at the books earlier and I seen one that uh, had uh, somewhat pendant flowers like this. Uh, you know, highly dentate leaves, pretty glandular, pretty sticky and glandular. I'm going to venture to say it smells nice. Look at all the glands, all the trichomes and the glands and shit on there. So again, the limiting factor here is not moisture. What's going to stress the plants out and what's going to be a stressor that they have to adapt to is intense ultraviolet radiation, high temperature fluctuations, fluctuations, and extreme cold. And then, of course, uh, just the human tumor, you know. That might be a stress that uh, they can't adapt to. We'll see. See this road right here. There's been all kinds of trucks and shit going to and from Bolivia. You know, some probably importing cocaine. There's coca leaves everywhere. You know, we were drinking coca tea, which uh, is not. I prefer coffee to the coca, actually. It doesn't do anything to me. You know, cocaine's kind of a sleaze drug, you know. I'm not really a fan of it. I haven't touched that in probably 15 years. Didn't even really like it when... Uh, people will give it to me it kind of turns people into Pavlov's dog just super boring super self-important you know more boring and more self-important than most people already are anyway and most people tend to be pretty boring and pretty self-important all right I'll quit being an asshole oh, look at that uh, look at that aster again let's uh, moving right along oh do you like andesitic sand almost makes me feel like I'm uh, back in a uh, Siskiyou County beautiful Siskiyou County California minus the meth Anyway, and, uh, oh, yeah, look at this. What, what's this guy? Is this another species of Ureta? Everything forms a mat here, so everything kind of looks the same. Let's get down close, take a quick look at, uh, Jesus Christ, I don't know what this is. Could this be that karyophyllaceous bastard? The fly seems to like it. Again, there's that Asteraceae, possibly a Peristrephia. Okay, so looking through the, uh, the trusty hand lens, what you're looking at are flowers that have not opened yet. This is not Apiaceae. It uh, is not Azarella. You know, of course, I'm going to be uh, punching myself on the balls if I'm wrong here. But look at that leaf structure, those imbricate leaves. Uh, this is, I don't, I don't know what this is, Karyophyllaceae. Possibly hard to tell without the uh, flowers open. But this is some weird shit regardless. 
Okay, so right there, see that the little tube is open. I think I think that's an open flower. I just seen a fly sticking his little uh, his little nose in there, his little proboscis. So uh, evidently, uh, I'm assuming he's the one that pollinates this. Okay, so it's pollinated by flies. They don't open that much. Again, close to the ground, it is so much warmer uh, than just the ambient air temperature. So, of course, you could see why everything grows in a mat. All right, and it's just convergent evolution at work. I know some of the fucking mouth breathers here. Well, maybe not even here, but some. every once in a while I get a shitty comment from some fucking moron who doesn't understand evolution and it gets mad about thinking about it. You could be religious and believe in evolution. I don't know why you got to be offended. You could believe. Tell yourself somebody somebody's directing it. I don't care. I don't believe that. I think it's bullshit. But if you want to tell yourself that, that's fine. Otherwise, you're just... You're just denying yourself uh, the wonders of endless forms most beautiful and what the shit. Yeah, we just seen some of those little uh, vicunjas, those llama looking bastards uh, running off in the distance over there. Kind of the equivalent of our uh, northern Nevada pronghorn. You know, this whole landscape reminds me kind of uh, northern Nevada, even though it's double the altitude. And of course you got chinchillas here too. No rabbits, I don't think. I think they just got chinchillas. I think, I think he's doing it. I think he's, you think he's up on the flowers bang themselves. See that little fly? Anyway, how do you think this guy is? You can see it all just emanating out from uh, where it started. That's why you get the growth, the uh, growth pattern like a ring. It dies in the sun and then keeps growing out. But look at that, it's an aster. Could be a, could be in the genus Werneria. Verna, hello Verna. Verna, come get supper. I don't know, why do I always think that I, Werner is fucking, why do I say it like that? I don't know. Is that racist? Am I being racist against German people? Do any of you feel triggered right now? The only people I like triggering are the Grampus. It's all right. I'll, I'll sway them to my side eventually. I'll get them to drop their silly ways and... Start uh, appreciating signs. Anyway, here you go. Asteraceae. Tiny flower. I mean, this thing is probably, I don't know, three millimeters across. Here you go. Let's take a closer look. Hold up the old uh, trusty, uh, the old trusty fucking. <laughs> you it's so big. I can't even. God damn it. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, uh, it's maybe two millimeters across. And again, just forming a mat with these uh, somewhat keeled leaves. Everything, of course, adopting the mat shape. Holy shit. My mind is blown. And then uh, right here, you got what I'm going to call the uh, bed of nails plant. Because, uh, you know, if you were to get naked and lay down on this, it'd feel like laying on a bed of nails. Some sort of uh, graminoid. You know, I haven't... Uh, reached the point of senility yet to where I'm gonna start caring about anything in this family but uh hey you know I appreciate it from a distance you know I, li I like mean plants I like them when they're sharp okay the elevation's uh high enough to make you feel dizzy or at least like you're on a bad acid trip here we have a plant in the Carif family an infamous plant uh, well known to anybody that's uh, in, you know, even remotely familiar with botany this is azarella compacta and it, uh, it's kind of hard to believe that it's in the carrot family but then you got to remember that anything that's up here is going to eventually evolve uh, at least 90 percent of shit that's up here is eventually going to evolve this low growing matted habit so we'll take a look at the flowers since flowers of course dictate what family something is placed in reproductive morphology is key don't look at the fucking leaves you know and uh, there you go you can see it does look like a carrot family flower looks like an apiaceous flower it's also uh, exuding resin a little bit and i just uh, put my hand here just to touch it ever so softly and uh and uh, then I, you know, realized I got some sticky stuff in my hand. And yeah, sure enough, it smells like many other plants you get in the care family. It smells kind of like a mix of osha, parsley, uh, many of those uh, resinous kind of uh, uh, care family plants, you know. Or at least it smells like the resin that you get from those. Um, so, uh, it's a pretty interesting uh, plant we got going here. Here's some flowers that haven't gone off yet. Some of these can live 
uh, up to 4,000 years reportedly. And you can see, I mean, where where we are right now is not a soft and, uh, you know, it, the the formations here, the geogra ge uh, geometric structures you're looking at are not going to be rounded and smoothed, okay? They're pretty rocky and abrasive. Yet here you have a plant that, of course, uh, it's, it's got quite a rounded and smooth texture to it. Thus, thus indicating it does probably go very deep. You know, it's probably like right there covering air rock. I mean, you're probably looking at at least five to six inches of material. You know, so were you to, uh, you know, drive a stake into there, I, you know, I don't mean to uh, offend the plant in saying so, but were you, you know, you would probably, uh, you'd probably go through quite a bit of plant material before you reach the rock. And again, there's uh, there's those apiaceous flowers. You can see the anthers on top of those stamens. And uh, it, it's too small for me to see the stigma without the handlings right now. But you got, you know, dozens of anthers. Quite a few anthers. Well, maybe only, maybe only six. I can't count right now. And then, of course, a little rosetta leaves. You know, and of course, on, on many members of the Care family, the... Uh, the flower is an umbel, and it would, of course, be on a peduncle, it'd be on a stock. You can't afford to do that here, because it's just it's so cold, and probably the winds are so brutal. You you get any elevation to any of your structures, it's going to get blown right off, or it's going to freeze. So, you know, the flowers become sessile. That is, they lack a peduncle. They're uh, pressed up against the plant right there. Anyway, I'll uh, shut the fuck up and just give you some uh, money shots of this plant right now. Again, probably pollinated by flies. I, the flies are the only thing I've seen up here. Maybe there's some bees. I don't know, you know. Probably shouldn't open my mouth. You can see it's, there's the resin. Resin is cool, dripping down. Like someone blew their nose. And again, that resin does smell pretty good. It smells so apiaceous. Ah, and there's the seed, typical winged seed. Pretty common in uh, apiaceae. Almost looks like a lomatium seed. Or like goosticum or... Did a chinchillas eat the seed? Who disperses it, I wonder? Look, there's some uh, there's some swollen ovaries. Not quite mature yet, but uh, certainly pollinated. Who pollinates as a real compactly? Is it the flies? Is it the flies? What is it? Is it some sort of weird, uh, strange bee? Oh, look, just grazing upon the grass, we have uh, a couple of vicuñas over there. And you got uh, one of those uh, big-ass saria birds over there. Where'd he go? There he is. If I zoom in on him nice, could you see him? What's it? What's, what are you eating over there? You got some bird seed? Give him some sunflower seeds? I'm just kidding. You're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to give the animals shit, you know? Unless you're in Oakland, then it's, uh, in which case, it's trash and they said it's fine. What you guys doing? You want to go buy nice? Eh? I'll give you some celery sticks. We'll go get you some nice produce. What do you eat? Anything you want. You want a pizza? I'll get you a cheeseless pizza with some fucking parsley on it. Okay. You know, well, am I coming on too strong, huh? Am I vibing you out a little bit? Come on, guys. Come on. Okay, up here on the Altiplano, roughly uh, 15,000 feet elevation. Uh, pretty, uh, pretty salty soil because uh, it doesn't apparently drain anywhere. You get that uh, great basin effect. Over there you got some uh, flamingos. We're going to try and get a little bit closer to them. See if we can check them out without uh, freaking them out, you know. But I tend to be a lot of noxious fucks, so that may not be possible. We'll see.
No, don't, don't, don't let us freak you out. Okay. Uh, you have a good afternoon. A couple of these guys were showboating earlier. They were showing off their, uh, like, pinkish orange uh, underside of their wings. There's some coots in there, too. Who doesn't love a coot, huh? If you don't love a coot, you're an asshole. Look at all that shit. Look at all that vicuña and uh, alpaca shit. Oh, my God. Looks like somebody had a campfire here, but that's all just little thirds. How about that? So, okay, so 15,000 feet on a substrate composed of volcanic sand and volcanic gravel. And volcanic gravel uh, seeming to be on the surface. Uh, we have the tallest arborescent plant in the world, a member of the rose family. Kind of looks like a juniper here. This is Polylepis tarapacana. Let's get you up close to it and show you that uh, bright red flaky bark. So indicative of the genus Polylepis. So you got uh, three or four matted plants. This is a species of Asteraceae. The flower was about three millimeters in that diameter. You got the Azarella compacta and uh, spiny dangerous grasses. Here's another, uh, I think that's one of those Caryophyllaceae. Yeah, I don't know. I don't have no idea what the hell that is. <clears throat> and uh, here's that Polylepis. You can see the foliage is... Uh, now we've seen Polylepis rugulosa too. Uh, the leaves were a little bit longer. And I uh, had another series of leaflets. These, uh, these aren't messing around. They're keeping it small. Because again, it gets so cold, it's so easy to dry out. And that ultraviolet light is so intense. And of course, that uh, flaky bark seems to be an adaptation to uh, insulating the plant against uh, temperatures that are quite commonly uh, below freezing. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that bark. It's real nice. So papery. Almost looks like some of those uh, Melaleuca trees down in uh, Australia. They have uh, fibrous bark, which is an adaptation to fire, of course. This is, a, in this case, it's obviously it's an adaptation to freezing. Not much fire up there. Jesus, look at this. Look at this guy. Almost looks like some little tiny, tiny coral. Barely 10 millimeters tall. There's some more over there. What the shit is this? Okay, so I, yeah, I think I got my answer. Uh, it appears to be something in Malvaceae. That weird fucking uh, little coral looking thing appears to be uh, something quite malvacious. Look at all those anthers fused to that central column, five pistols, and then of course, uh, you know, it, uh, the foliage just kind of looks like someone got a bad case of genital warts, you know? Except you wouldn't want to burn these off with the little freezing thing. You just kind of want to uh, enjoy the fucking structure of a plant that's able to subsist in such a harsh environment at 15,000 goddamn feet elevation, uh, you know, exposed to intense ultraviolet light, as well as uh, freezing temperatures. Holy shit. Variations on a theme. Huh? Pass through the filter of uh, high altitude, I guess. Huh? Anyway, there you go. Nautotrichy Malvaceae. Nautotrichy is the genus. Not sure which species, but... uh. You could see uh, the size comparison there. That flower is uh, roughly, uh, yeah, it's like 10 millimeters in diameter, a little bit over that, maybe 15 millimeters in diameter. Um, but it's <laughs> just wild. And I seen a little clumps of foliage earlier. Just had no idea what the shit it was. Knew it was going to be something interesting, though. Growing on uh, the volcanic sand. There's some sort of little uh, zygomorphic flower, maybe a verbenaceae, maybe a something else. Doesn't smell like a verbena. See, he's hiding in the cracks in the rock. Hey, look at it. Look at the uh, look at the polylepis coming up beneath the uh, mat. Of coming up amongst the mat of azarella. Who rose this? Azarella's dying. A nice thick uh, little peaty, peaty mat. Again, these things can probably live for thousands of years. Both of these things. Some nice porphyry in this andesite. 
it's a little bit uh, sketchy of a uh, climb, but uh, uh, what what you gotta do to get a nice footage of a uh, cumulo puncha boliviana blooming? Dozens of stamens, a central stigma, and beautiful orange peoples, and of course those uh, barbed spines that'll stick in your ass. Ah, it's a nice ureta. Look at that, Israel compact. How do you think that one is? Just draped over the side of a fucking cliff. Okay, here in this uh, putrid pond, we have a pretty interesting plant. It's actually an aquatic fern, known as the mosquito fern, a species of azola. These things uh, form a mat. They're called a mosquito fern because uh, the thinking goes they used to be used to eradicate mosquitoes uh, from various bodies of water because they would form such a thick mat they'd essentially cover and suffocate the, cover the surface of the pond and suffocate the mosquitoes. Anyway, there you go, Zola. Ancient lineage, though. What are you doing? You just taking a little nap? You don't gotta worry about me. I'm not gonna mess with you. I just wanna see what you're doing. Because if we drove by, you're just hanging out there. You're just taking a little nap on the side. You're just uh, nibbling on some, uh, some of these perennial matty plants and then uh, you take a shit and go to sleep. That's kind of nice. All right, just coming up on the rhyolite, not too notable, just a little roadside weed. I happen to like them. The Gides, the, uh, the genus of Mexican marigolds, known for the glands they have on their foliage. Smell pretty good, pretty pungent. But notable about this is the foliage is almost black. It's like a purplish color. And then, of course, the flowers are discoid. It's a member of the sunflower family, as the Raceae. Look at the little discoid-ass flowers. But look at that goddamn foliage, though. Look at that. Just blends in with the rhyolite. What pigments are in there? Better yet, what compounds are in that uh, tissue? It gives it that uh, such a nice and very pungent smell, huh? Ah, uh, that's one way to, to uh, prevent the. Yeah, that's uh, that's one way to prevent the landslide. Just throw a giant cage over the side of the hill. Look, it's already caught quite a bit. That rhyolite's very unstable. Crumbles real easy. Anyway, it looks like we have another uh, member of the pea family. Quite likely in a desmia species. Highly glandular, yeah, definitely in a desmia. Uh, very glandular, smells very pungent. Look at the fucking glands on those stems. Ooh. All right, in higher elevation South America, Mutisia is a very common and pretty diverse genus in the sunflower family, Asteraceae. This is Mutisia hamata, and you can see it grows scant. It's coming up in another plant. It's kind of whirling its way up, almost vine-like in another plant. Many of them do this. Check out those... Uh, Really weird, almost pinnate uh, leaves right there. You can see they got uh, quite a little bit of uh, indumentum on there. Uh, quite glandular as well. And then you get up close and look at those flowers. Very prominent yellow styles coming out there. Bright red ligules. So there's there's quite a few variations on Mutisia. Some look fucking wild. They're kind of like almost they're almost like the orchids of a sunflower family. And they all tend to have this very elongated capitula right here uh, with uh, multi-seriate filaries. It is a, a, a series of those roofing shingle bracts that surround the involute. Ah, oh, this is pretty nice. Growing in a CP, you got a species of monkey flower, Mimulus depressus, formerly in the genus Mimulus, now probably, of course, an erythranth. It looks a lot like erythranth mutata. Obviously, uh, I don't know if that you... Chilean botanist caught the memo yet that they changed the genus. But you know, a bunch of people were throwing a hissy fit about this. A bunch of, I think a bunch of the older folk were getting real upset that the genus of Mimulus got changed a couple years ago. I support changing the genus. It makes sense, all right? Because Erythranth and Diplacus, they, they do look a lot different. And then when you look at the molecular phylogenetics, it says so too. But, you know, whatever. People need their battles to fight. Makes them feel important, I guess. Anyway, there you go. Mimulus, now erythranth depressus, growing at about, I don't know, 12,000 feet in uh, northern Chile, in a little wash.
Okay, anyway, there's a giant volcano, and here's a really cool, uh, one of the more basal asters, the earlier branching lineages of asters. Remember I was telling you, all those earlier branching lineages of the, the sunflower family, they're like the orchids of the sunflower family. Look at the purple styles on this guy. Look at it. Just fucking <laughs> imbricate leaves, and I just forming a small shrub. There's another one right over there. Just coming straight out the rock. There's the uh, phyllaries all bent back. That's a spent flower. Seeds have already dispersed. And then there's one with the pappus on it. I wonder if the seeds are any good on this guy. Maybe. Look at that. Well, he's not, he's not uh, going off like this guy is, though. What a weird looking <laughs> fucking... South America's got all the cool sunflower family members, huh? Bilabia corollas. You got a long ass, uh, you got a long ass capitula like that. You got bilabia corollas. You got the uh, super long styles like that. It's probably, there's a good chance it's one of the earlier branching lineages, the uh, Mutisiae or the Barnadesioidae. Oh, look at it. You see this pattern in rhyolite sometimes, these, this banding. Pretty odd. Anyway, there's a bunch of Oreos, serious. If I can get up there without breaking my ass, uh, buy me a burrito. I'm just kidding. Don't buy me shit. Just enjoy yourself. Why don't you just sit back and have a nice time? Huh? Let me do all the work. Looks like that thing was some polygonaceous thing. This guy. Fuck, you know, for a minute you think you're fine, the altitude's not fucking with you, but no, it's, it's fucking with you. It's the dense mat of trichomes up top. I planted one, <laughs> I planted one of these in a train yard in Oakland. What a prick I am, huh? Needless to say, it didn't do so well. Turns out those hairs work as a perfect catchment device for diesel particulates. But it was nice for a little while. Okay, so you got the Oreo series, and over here you got the nice specimen of Choreo cactus. Long spines, no trichomes up top. Quite a number of ribs, probably 10 ribs on this. These can get rather tall. This is actually a small one. They can get up, upwards of 15, maybe even 20 feet tall. Here's another uh, fine specimen of that weird-ass mutisioid aster. Look at it. Like how it's got no branches on the lower uh, part of its uh, shoots. No no foliage in the lower part of its shoots. Just It's kind of got this candelabra thing going on. And then just <laughs> that fucking weird-ass capitula. Ah! I love it! Ooh. Yeah, nice uh, Oreo serious leucotrichus right there. And of course, the dominant shrub here is just the species of nightshade. It's your typical uh, salver-form corollas right there. Somewhat uh, geometric uh, foliage. And of course, it's crispy and brown as hell. It's super dry here right now. Lots of, uh, looks like andesite everywhere. Fucking little toupee. Where'd you get your toupee? Anyway, that's all I got for you tonight. Uh, have a good uh, rest of your evening. Go fuck yourself. Bye.